Amen. Hallelujah. Why don't we all stand up and let's just give him another round of applause because he is worthy. Amen. The Lord is worthy. Hallelujah. We give glory, honor, power, and praise to the name that is above every name. And I declare in Jesus' name, at the, at the mention of that name, every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Give me a hand clap right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Amen. You may take your seat. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for that wonderful uh, <laughs> introduction. Amen. Um, it's so wonderful to be here. Uh, one thing I can declare beyond question and doubt is I know that this is a word church. Amen. Come on. Give Jesus a hand clap. Amen. I can always tell a word church because of the way that, that, uh, the, the way that it is expressed. It's expressed in singing, in worship, in praise, in declaration, in fellowship, and everything. And everything that we've uh, experienced this morning up to now, you can see the word of God in it. Amen. Amen. And so thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor, for opening the house, for your invitation. It's good to see you. It's been four months, five months, something like that. It's been a while, and some of you even longer than that. Too long. Somebody say too long. Too long. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. But it is good to be back, and uh, I want to uh, thank you for loving God the way that you do, no doubt, that, that uh, the love that is being expressed to the Lord here in this place, uh, I'm sure it's not just today, but Every time you get together is genuine and it's sincere. Amen. Say it with me. I love the Lord Jesus. I love the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Amen. Amen. And so anyway, I also want to thank some wonderful friends of ours that have joined us here today. Um, we want to thank uh, uh, Sister Kwok. Kwok, yeah. And uh, her husband, Frankie. And her son, Clinton. Amen. Come on. Welcome him in the Lord. And uh, uh, Sister Stephanie, one of, uh, amen. Give Jesus. She's a, a Breakthrough Global Ministries intercessor. And, uh, uh, of course, we, SK. Thank you, SK. Amen. In fact, stand up and give everybody a wave right now. Say, shout a big hug. God bless you. Amen. Amen. You may take a seat. Amen. Now, uh, Pastor, I must share a testimony before we go into, uh, into the service, into the word, uh, into the message that the Lord has uh, given for this day. And it is, uh, I, I want to share this because it concerns you. And, uh, you know, it's just an amazing thing that has developed, and I just want to declare this to you right now, beyond question and doubt, that one word from God can change your life Amen. forever, Amen. for eternity. Amen. 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 Just one word from God. Some, some time back, uh, a few months maybe, um, I was uh, graciously invited to uh, minister at the Four Square International Annual Convention in Port Dixon. And it was through uh, uh, Pastor Sam uh, that uh, I was invited. And uh, so uh, it happened just as we had uh, anticipated. I went to, to the conference and we were having an amazing worship in, in that place. It was so good. It was so powerful that I literally fell on my face. I was on my face Wednesday morning, September the 7th, worshiping the Lord. 
And it was that kind of worship where you just kind of get lost in the moment and you lose consciousness of uh, the the surroundings, the, the atmosphere, the, the and, and and you just lose consciousness of time. And I was just there in, in worshiping the Lord. I was literally on my face on the floor worshiping the Lord. And as I was worshiping the Lord, I heard his voice distinctly. How many people know that God speaks today? We have a talking God. Somebody say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In fact, the word of the Lord says today, if you hear his voice, amen. And so I heard the voice of the Lord. And that's wonderful. That's one of the greatest blessings that we have as a child of God. Because, you know, the word of the Lord says that all the gods of the other nations are idols. They're made out of gold. They're made out of silver. They're made out of wood. They're made out of stone. It says they have eyes, but they cannot see. They have ears, but they cannot hear. They have noses, but they cannot smell. They have mouths, but they cannot speak. They have hands, but they cannot handle. They have feet, but they cannot walk. They must be carried everywhere that they go. It says, and they that worship them are just like them. We literally become like who we worship. Come on, give my hand clap right now. And when we worship the living God, the life that is God himself, Zoe, the God kind of life, the Lord Jesus said, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the... Amen. Give my hand clap right now. Amen. As we worship the Lord, that Zoe kind of life begins to penetrate our very being, every cell in our body. Hallelujah. And and there's a spiritual autophagy that begins to take place. Autophagy is when your body heals itself by consuming and eradicating uh, damaged cells. And it begins to eat itself. In a, in a sense, heal itself. It happens through fasting and prayer and stuff like that. Well, spiritually speaking, that life, that Zoe life of God, hallelujah, begins to come into your being. Every cell, hallelujah, every bone, the marrow in the bone, the muscles, the tendons, the nerves, it just it just begins to be swallowed up. Death is swallowed up in life. Amen. Amen. Come on, give him a hand clap right now. And what winds up happening is that we get healed of sickness. We get healed of disease. We get healed of infirmity. We get healed of pain. We get delivered of oppression. Somebody say amen. Hey, give him a hand clap right now. My God, hallelujah. Mm. And so anyway, I was, I was worshiping the Lord and all of a sudden I heard his voice. And the Lord said to me, ask Pastor Angie Ho if she will marry you. <laughs> And uh, I was literally just seconds away from getting up to speak. It was exactly at 9.45 a.m., Wednesday morning, September the 7th. And I was about to get up to speak, and the Lord said, Ask Pastor Angie if she will marry you. And my thinking was, "Mm, I'm supposed to get up and worship. I, I mean, I'm supposed to get up and minister the word. Literally, in in a matter of seconds, I'll ask her after the message. 
But then I sensed an urgency in the spirit. How many know how it is when you feel an urgency in your spirit? You know, you feel that you need to make that phone call. You need to feel that you need to talk to somebody. You need to, you feel like you need to go somewhere. You feel like you need to say something. There's an urgency that takes place inside. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And so, uh, I just felt that urgency and the Lord said, no, ask her now. Immediately. So, you know. I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I'll tell you that. Every once in a while, I get it, you know. And so I got up off my face, and Pastor Angie was sitting in a row behind me. So I leaned in, into, her, into her ear. And uh, because there was a cacophony of sound in the room. People were worshiping. They were praising. They were clapping. There was excitement. There was life. You know how it is when the, when the presence of the Lord is near. Amen? Amen. Well, that's the way it was. And I leaned into her ear and I said, will you marry me? <laughs> Come on, give Jesus a hand clap. <laughs> I said, will you marry me? And she said, yes. <laughs> Come on, give Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so, and then of course I went up to minister the word it happened so quickly. It was as quickly as you just heard it. I said, will you marry me? She said, yes. Two seconds, three seconds. And uh, it happened so quickly <laughs> that I, you know, me being human, somebody say, you're human. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, in, in the Roman days, when all these uh, Roman uh, racers and chariot riders and gladiators and things like that, when they would win, you know, they would uh, get on a chariot and they were paraded in that chariot. And people would just cheer and clap. And, you know, the Lord says that he uh, defeated the enemy and he triumphed over the enemy. In the cross, and but with the Roman, uh, you know, gladiators and you know warriors and competitors and racers and everything, as they were being paraded in these in these chariots, and people were just literally, virtually worshiping them like gods. It hasn't really changed much, has he? We have sports figures today that are literally worshipped. You know, basketball players, football players, whatever it is out there, the, the golfers, tennis players, and all that stuff, they're literally worshipped virtually to the point of idolizing them. And so, but anyway, bef behind every champion, there was a, a second uh, rider in the chariot, and he would continuously be speaking into his ear, in the middle of all the cacophony of cheering and praising and adulation and all that, they, that would continuously speak into the champion's ears and say, remember, thou art but a man. Remember, thou art but a man. Remember, thou art but a man. And they would do this so that these champions not, would not become so you know, elated in their own mind that they would actually begin to think highly of themselves, higher than they should. And so I'm just a man. I'm no different than you are or anybody else. The only, the only distinction in, in my personal life is that Jesus Christ lives in me. Amen. And that's what Paul says. Paul said in Galatians chapter 2, he said, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Amen. And then he says, I do not frustrate the grace of the Lord. 
He says, for if righteousness has come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Hallelujah. So, me being a man that I am, you know, when I started to minister the word, I began to question. Because it happened so quickly. I said, will you marry me? And she said, yeah. It happened so quickly that as I was ministering the word, I began to think, you know, I wonder if she heard me. <laughs> you know, and I'd minister the word a little bit and, you know, a few minutes would go by and then another thought would come in. Well, maybe she heard, but maybe she didn't understand me. And so, you know, I'm, I'm all throughout the message, Pastor. I don't know if you guys noticed anything, but all throughout the message, I was wondering if she heard me. I was wondering if she understood me. I started to wonder if I even heard it right, you know. Or the, so anyway, so afterwards I went and I, um, I said, Pastor Angie, um, did you hear what I said? When I spoke to you, she said, yeah. I said, uh, again, it was so quick that it was kind of like, hmm. And then I said, uh, oh, okay. Well, I mean, did you understand what I said? And she said, yeah. <laughs> so I got three yeses. Amen. Give Jesus a hand clap. So I would like to introduce to you uh, my beautiful wife, Pastor Angie Ho. Could you please stand and amen. Thank you. Uh, the Lord has truly blessed me uh, beyond measure. I cannot even, you know, recount to you or even enumerate how much blessing God has given me through this. And I just want to thank you, Pastor, because it was your invitation that brought me to Port Dixon, the conference and the... It's your fault. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Amen. But I just wanted to thank you in person because it was through your instrumentation that the Lord has brought this amazing blessing in my life. Can we bless the Lord? Amen. And so, thank you, Pastor. Once again, it's just truly, truly amazing. But I, I want to share some things with you today that um, uh, are, are really powerful. Uh, knowing that this is a word, church, I can, I can tell that just by the way that you guys recite uh, together, the way that you pray together, the way that you take communion. I know that there's a depth of understanding in this place that is uh, pleasing to the Lord. And I want to share something with you about the context of, oh, I'm sure that you're wondering what my glasses are doing here. It has to do with the message. <laughs> Believe it or not, uh, uh, that development took place just a few seconds ago when I was st standing there in the front row. I, uh, you know, I kind of went like this and I said, hey. Oh, my goodness. And so this is what happened. When, when, uh, when I got into the car this morning, I, I, got my, I took my glasses. Then I got into the car, and I started reading the word, and I forgot about the glasses. I just put them there. And uh, so then later, as we were driving, the sun was hitting me in the face, and it was a beautiful sun. Thank God for the sun this morning. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was a beautiful sun, but it was right in my face. And I started thinking, I wonder where my glasses are. And I thought, hmm, you know, right before I put my shoes on in the house, I thought, well, maybe I set them down on the, on the counter. And, uh, well, anyway, so I just kind of, you know, I just kind of squinted a little bit. And I just figured I'll just tough it out. And so I thought I had forgot my glasses not realizing that they were right here. <laughs> now, how does that bear uh, with the message? Well, it's, it's very simple. I want to talk to you about who you are, what you have, and what for. There was a, a, a time when Peter, 
came out of a prayer meeting in the book of Acts, chapter 3. And uh, as he was going to uh, the, the, the Solomon's temple, he was going in the book of Acts, chapter 3. And as he was going to the temple, going in to the house of God, it says that there was a man that was crippled uh, standing or sitting at the, the gate of the, uh, the door of the church. And the reason he was sitting there was because he had been lame since his mother's womb. He was paralyzed since he was born. And as Peter was going forth, he saw this man and he noticed that this man was expecting to receive something. And I'm sure that what the man was expecting to receive was a handout, alms. He was expecting to receive maybe enough to get lunch for the day or uh, for dinner for the evening or something of that nature. But as he's sitting there and he's crying out to the people and he's saying, alms, alms for the poor. You know, as he's sta is sitting there cr crying out to uh, at large, you know, hoping that somebody would have compassion on him and maybe drop a coin in his, in his cup or something. And so Peter, as he notices that the man is there, and I'm sure that they had noticed him before because they've been to this temple oftentimes. But this time there was something different that happened. Now they had been endued from on high. The Lord told his disciples, tarry in Jerusalem until I send unto you the promise of the Father and you be endued with power from on high. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And what the Lord was talking about is the fullness and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So they went to the upper room and they were there for about 10, 10 days praying and waiting to be endued from on high. To be endued means to be clothed. It's like to put on a mantle or to put on a garment or to put on vestments. And the Lord is talking about a clothing, a vestment, a covering that is not natural like our shirts and our pants. It is the divine presence of the living God. Somebody say amen. Hey! God! Hallelujah! Amen. Give Jesus a hand clap right now. We're talking about a God that is able to clothe us with divine presence. Somebody say amen. In the book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 14, the word of the Lord, the word of the Lord talks about taking on the armor of light. Hallelujah. Amen. Light repels darkness. Somebody say amen. And so they went up there and they prayed for 10, 10 days. They were praying to the Lord. I don't know how long you've been praying, but I'm going to tell you this. Do not lose your patience. Do not lose your hope because they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. Hallelujah. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Hey. It doesn't matter how long we wait. I'm going to tell you something right now. Hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord are going to be clothed with the Aravakashanda, the righteousness of God. Amen. And Peter is seeing this man that is expecting to receive something. We're seeing something in that little phrase right there. Peter seeing that he was expecting to receive. Let me tell you something. When we go out there and you, you, you go into the restaurant, you go into the Kadai, you go into the wherever it is that you, your sphere or your circle of activity is, look around. If you see somebody that looks like they need a word of encouragement, they want to receive something. If you see somebody that's hitting a headache, they want something. They need something. They must have something. Somebody's family is in dysfunctionality. They need to hear that word. They're ready to receive. Somebody say amen. amen. A thirsty man wants water. Say amen. A hungry man wants food. Somebody say amen. amen. A tired man wants rest. Say yes. Hallelujah. Hey! Hallelujah. These are the little tip-offs that we can see when we look around and you see people that are needing. Don't say, Lord, do you want me to speak to this individual? Don't ask the Lord, Lord, should I talk to that person? No, no. If they're thirsty, they want water. Say amen. If they're hungry, they want food. Say amen. 
Hallelujah. Mbaraka said, if they're blind, they want to see. If they're deaf, they want to hear. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. And so Peter, noticing that he wants to receive something, the man doesn't realize he, the only thing that he thinks he needs is a little coin in his cup. Thank God that Peter did not have silver and gold. <laughs> Somebody say amen. I said, thank God that he had no silver and gold. Because many times we see this spiritual need in people's lives and we want to throw natural provision at it. We, we want to provide well for the family. You know, every father wants to give food to their children. They want to clothe their children. They want to provide a house for their family. They want to be good providers. And we have a tendency to throw a natural provision at a spiritual need. But somebody say, thank the Lord for Peter. Peter said, silver and gold, hallelujah, have I none. But such as I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise and walk. Hallelujah. And it says in the word of the Lord that that, 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 that invalid's ankles and feet and legs were filled with strength. He jumped up to his feet, hallelujah, and began to jump up and down and say, hallelujah, praise the Lord. He set me free. He set me free. Hallelujah. Amen. And he began to go run into the church praising God. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Hey, what am I talking to you about? Every single one of you, if you've known the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, and you've been filled with the Spirit of the living God, you've been clothed with righteousness and a garment of light, every single one of you has the exact same thing that Peter had. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Why am I saying this to you? Because it tells us in the word in the book of Matthew chapter 10 and verse 8. It says, go, I want you to go and heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, and cast out devils. Freely, freely, you have received, freely give. Amen. And so what the Lord is telling, you know what the problem with us in Christianity is that we're sitting around and we're saying, Lord, Lord, give, give you an anointing. Lord, give me more power. Or oh, Lord, give me this and give me, I want the gift of this and the gift of that and the gift of the other and all that stuff. And we, let me, let me tell you the difference between faith and unbelief. You can always hear it in the way that people pray. Pray. And it works like this. People that have unbelief, for instance, let's say that I'm dealing with an awkward association, a client, a friend, a neighbor, things like that. And we, we get this kind of a desperateness in ourselves and we say, oh Lord, give me grace to deal with this individual. Oh, Lord, give me grace to love this, in, this man or this woman or this person. Oh, Lord, I need strength to get through this, this, this day. And, and so by default, the word of the Lord says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And inherently, that individual the, is not convinced or persuaded that they have the grace of God. They are not convinced and persuaded that they have the strength of God. They're not convinced and persuaded that they have whatever it takes to overcome. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. But those that have faith, Instead of saying, oh, Lord, give me grace, you know what they say? As they're going into a challenging situation, Lord, thank you for the grace to deal with this situation. 
how, I don't know. When, I don't know. Who, I don't know. Where, I don't know. But I thank you, Lord, that I have the grace to deal with this situation. Come on, give him a hand clap right now. Hey, I'm telling you something right now. The, the, the individual that has faith does not, it, Paul spoke it this way. He said, I am persuaded, hallelujah, that nothing can separate me from the love of God. Hallelujah. Principalities, power, might, dominion, things present, nor things to come, nor angels, nor death, nor anything can separate me from the love of God. Hallelujah. Give him a hand clap right now. And so, that is what caused the Apostle Paul to make declarations such, such enormous, majestic, you know, gigantic declarations like I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me somebody say amen hallelujah and so faith hallelujah is not waiting for it anymore faith just takes it hallelujah faith just says I thank you Lord hallelujah that when I get to that the Red Sea it's going to part hallelujah Amen. When I face Goliath, he's going down. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Hey, when I go through the furnace of fire, I will not be burned. Somebody say amen. When I go through the water, I will not be overwhelmed. Somebody say amen. When I get thrown into a line of dens, they will not harm me. Hallelujah. Because the Lord has sent an angel. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. And so I want to declare something to you right now that you already have everything that you need. It says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 3 that he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Give Jesus a hand clap right now. Hallelujah. All of your needs have already been provided. Hallelujah. Do you need more joy? You've already got joy. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. Remember that old song that we used to sing? I wish we would bring it back a little more and sing it more often. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. No. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. No. This joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it and the world can take it away. Come on. Give Jesus a hand clap. Hallelujah. I don't need to sit here and say, oh, Lord, uh, I need more joy. No, no, no. I've got it. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. I There's another old song that says, uh, there's something that I cannot explain, but I got it. There's something about the power of the Holy Ghost that I can't explain, but I got it. Somebody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. We It says in the book of 1 John chapter 2 and verse 20, the anointing which you have received abides in you. Hallelujah. And so, you know, we need to just start receiving it by faith. We need to take it by faith. We need to enter into it by faith. We need to enter into the rest of the Lord. Like it says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 19 and 11. It says that there is a rest that remains for the body of Christ. Enter into it. Stop struggling. Stop saying, Lord, oh, I need more love. I need more strength. I need more man. I need more anointing. I need more this. I need more that. No, no, no. Just say, Lord, thank you. Thank you, Lord, that you've given me all the wisdom, all the knowledge, all the understanding, all the joy, all the peace, all the strength. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen. amen. There's something about the character and the nature of everything that God does in us that's different than what the world does. And it's different than everything that the world offers. The word calls it like this, Pastor. The word calls it everlasting joy. Hallelujah. The, world, the, the word calls it everlasting peace, everlasting strength, everlasting kingdom. 
Hallelujah. The, the everlasting word. Hallelujah. Everlasting life. Hallelujah. There are something different about the things that God does in us that has done in us already that is designed to go beyond Sunday afternoon. Somebody say amen. amen. We come to church, we jump and we shout and we sing and we cry and we laugh and we bless the Lord and everything. And by four o'clock on Sunday afternoon, when the rice is burnt, when the gas needle is going down, when your neighbor is acting up, somebody cuts you off on the road. Amen. And the joy is gone. The peace is gone. The blessing is gone. But no, no, it's not. No, it's not. Remember these glasses? They were there. I just forgot that they were there. And that's what happens to us. He says, he that is a forgetful hearer is like the man that looks in the mirror and forgets what manner of man he is. Amen. Do not be a hearer of the word only, but be a doer. If I go, pastor, and I get mad at you, you know what? I'm forgetting that I'm a child of God. I'm forgetting that God has given me a peace that surpasses all understanding. I'm forgetting when I'm in a circumstantial situation that the joy that God has given me is full of glory. Hallelujah. And instead of allowing situations and circumstances to bring me down, I said, no, uh -uh, not here, no more, not me. No. Hallelujah. Sharavakasanda. I am a child of God. I remember when I dealt with this situation in, in my marital situation with my late wife, the beautiful Pastor Deborah. You know, one time I got mad at her, and, uh, you know, uh, she being the meek lamb of God that she was, she refused to fight back and everything. She, she refused to contend with me. And so, uh, and, and she was so meek and so humble and so gentle and so loving. It made me feel like a heel, you know, because here I am wanting to fight, you know, I'm wanting to duke it out. You know, I'm wanting her to react and respond to my situation, but she refused. She just looked at me and she said, you know, there's no glory on those words. And she just, she just walked away. And I was left standing in the middle of the room looking like a complete idiot. <laughs> but then I, conviction fell in. And I said to the Lord, Lord, I do not want to be an angry man. Take it away, Lord. And he did. He changed me. And so then the enemy came back. And this time I said, no, -uh, no, not here. Uh -uh, I've already dealt with this. Faith claims it. Now faith is. Not is going to be. Now faith is the substance of things that we hope for. And so now faith says, no, I've already prayed about this. I've already dealt with this no more. Amen. In the name of Jesus, anger be gone. Leave now. Hallelujah. And you know what? As if we resist the devil, it says in the word of the Lord, he will flee from Amen. you. Amen. Somebody says, I'm going to resist. He's going to flee. From me. from me in Christ, in Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, the Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Give him a hand clap right now. And so the Lord said to us, I'm bringing Sarah and all this with you to say simply this Book of Matthew, chapter 10, and verse 8. He says, Go, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead. 
cast out devils. Are you ready for it? Freely. Freely. You have received. Freely give. The power of that phrase is so absolutely extraordinary that it turns in every single one of you into extraordinary individuals. If you have received salvation, you're the perfect instrument to witness to somebody and bring them into the saving knowledge of Christ Jesus our Lord. Come on. If you have experienced financial breakthroughs in your life, did you know that you are the perfect instrument to go out and be a blessing to somebody in that regard? Somebody that's struggling. And I'm not talking about giving them money. I'm talking about sharing with them the faith that has blessed you. If he's fixed your body, if he's healed you, you're the perfect one to go out there and say, oh, does your knee hurt? Here, let me bless you right now. Freely. I had somebody say Amen. amen. As freely as I have received, I will freely give. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. This is what we're talking about right here. The one thing that is needed today, right now, is this simply. Now, this is going to be the challenge for you. And it's a very fundamental verse that most of us know by memory. For God so loved the world. Amen. There's two words in there that I'd like to allude to. One of them is the world. I'm going to challenge you to go outside of yourself. And I want you to think about the times that you go out and have coffee, you go out and have fellowship, you have potlucks, you have church services, conferences, seminars, concerts, whatever it is that we do in life. Uh, I want to challenge you. For God so loved the world. Sometimes we detach ourselves so much from the world, the people that are lost, the people that are in darkness, the people that really need hope, the people that really need faith, the people that really need the love of God, but yet we somehow confine ourselves to we confine ourselves to a circle or a sphere of activity that encompasses only as far as the brethren. But God did not come to himself. He says he came to the world. The love of God, which is agape, the Greek word for love in that verse is the Greek word agape. And the difference between philos love and agape love is that brotherly love, I can love my son, my daughter, my brother, my sister, my mother, my father. I can love those that are around me or those that are like me or those that can get along with me or those that laugh at my jokes and all that stuff, you know, or those that appreciate my good looks, you know. <laughs> Come on. <give> me <laughs> it's easy. It's easy to do that. But God didn't do that. It was not enough for him to be self-sufficient and restrain himself to himself. Did you know that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit could be from eternity past to eternity future and be completely and totally self-content? But that, that was not enough for them. The love that they had for humanity, for those that are lost, for those that are sick. Jesus said, I did not come to those that are well. He says, I came 
to those that are sick. Do you know anybody in the hospital right now? A friend, a relative, a neighbor, somebody that you might not even know. If you do, that's an excellent opportunity to take the agape love of God and go out there. I was walking through the hospital the other day. I went to go pray for a friend of mine. And uh, as I was going through, I saw this elderly lady and I, I, just, I just sensed compassion for her. But it was an inconvenient moment to stop and so I just walked past. But then I started walking back again and I, I saw it and I felt it again. And I said, thank you, Lord, for giving me this opportunity. This time I had the impertinent faith. Somebody say there's such a thing as impertinent faith. I interrupted the conversation they were having that she was having with their family. And I said to the younger lady, I said, is this your mother? She said, yeah. I said, she's beautiful. I said, what's her name? And she gave me some name. And then I said, what's the problem? Well, she, she began to recount the problem and everything like that. And I said, has she been prayed for? And I can tell that they were not accustomed to, to this impertinence. And she said, well, uh, I said, do you mind if I pray for her? And her face lit up and she said, uh, yeah, sure. And, and then she spoke to, to the mother in their own language. And she said that this, and I really like the lady, she said, this young man. <laughs> I said, hallelujah, amen. My faith went up like that, you know. To, now she said, this young man wants to pray for you. And the, the elderly lady's face lit up. And she said, okay, thank you. And so I went and prayed for her. If you know anybody in the hospital right now, friend or foe. Amen? It doesn't matter. Release your faith. That dare to love somebody. Dare to reach out to people. The agape love of God loves the unlovable. The agape love of God reaches the unreachable. Touches the untouchable. Amen. The love of God that is in you, somebody say it's in me. It's there for a reason. It's there for a purpose. Now, let me just give you a couple of pointers in this regards and then we're going to pray. Because we want to release you into miracles. We want to release you into your gifts of healing. Gifts of deliverance. Gift of faith. Gift of healing. Amen. We want to release you into your prophetic destiny in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. But this is what it takes. Listen, the word of the Lord says this. Where sin abounds, Amen. I knew that you were a word church. Hallelujah. Give yourself a hand clap right now. Where sin abounds, the grace of God abounds much more. So the worse the case looks, the greater grace that there is available. I, I, I tell you, it never ceases to amaze me uh, when, when people talk to me about neighbors or husbands or wives or children. Oh, Pastor, you don't know how bad this person is. It's just really it's terrible. I'm thinking, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Where sin abounds, the grace of God abounds much more. Amen. Hallelujah. If I had a, a flea with a headache over here and I have a person that is wasting away with cancer, where would the greater grace be? Amen. Why? Because sin is abounding there. If it's really dark here and just kind of twilight here, where's the light going to shine brighter? Right here. Amen. 
Where sin abounds, the grace abounds much more. Somebody say amen. amen. Let me share this testimony with you. And, and then we're going to pray. Point number one. Where the greater or the worse the situation looks, the greater the grace and power and the glory of God that's available. Say amen. amen. I had a young man. Uh, he, was, uh, he was from a very wealthy family. He was a student in Canada. He's from China. And the, the parents called me from Beijing. We were in Guiyan. And they said, Can, uh, we need you to pray for our son. I said, what's wrong with your son? They said, well, you know, drugs and this. He, he went out to Canada and got involved in drugs and then got involved with a girl and got involved in immorality. And then that immorality led to worse things like abortions and so forth and so on. And it was tearing the man's conscience up, this young man. And... Uh, he just left his university studies and they couldn't find him. Finally, they located him in Beijing. And when, when the father went to retrieve the son or bring him back home, the son was under the influence of drugs and he picked up his father into the air and slammed him into the ground. And now the father's heart, uh, back was hurt. And the doctor said, there's nothing we can do for it. It's, you know, the damage is such, in such a way where we can't do surgery or anything. So now the father had a, 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 a hurt back. And the son was, uh, you know, <laughs> let me tell you about the son. So we're on the phone. And I've prayed for many people over the phone that have been healed in other states and other places. So I'm talking to the lady on the phone. And she says, can you pray for my son? I said, yeah, let's pray. She says, no, we'll, we'll come. I said, well, oh, oh, aren't you in Beijing? She said, yeah. She says, says well, I, I said, well, you don't have to come. We can pray over the phone and the Lord can do the work. She said, no, we're going. Immediately, they bought tickets for the whole family. They came to Guiyan. And I'm sitting in the room waiting for this young man. And we, when he came in, he was the personification of rebellion. Half of his hair was shaved. And the other half was sticking straight up into the air. He was wearing black, you know, and like that gothic look, you know, the... The, the black, everything is black and everything is dark and everything is, and the, even the way they look at you is menacing, you know, and it's just, and they had, you know, uh, what do you call those uh, things, you know, the piercings or whatever it is that they, you know, all over the place and, you know, it, it was just looking at this individual was intimidating if we don't know Romans 5.20. And so he comes in and, and they introduced me to him. We'll call him A. Uh, they introduced me to A, and I said, uh, what's your problem, A? And then immediately, when we deal with people like this, the first thing that's in the heart is going to come out. And he said, I hear voices. Oh. I said, uh, what are the voices saying? He says, the, the voices are telling me that I can save the world. Ah. And so right there, the Lord gave me everything, what the enemy was doing and what God's purposes was. And I told him, okay, well, let me tell you what it means. I let him talk for about 15 minutes, and I said this. A, I said, I want you to know that you have a calling on your life. But I also want you to know that if you're hearing voices, I said, all the barriers in your life have been removed. The enemy is now wanting to destroy your heart and your soul. And I want you to know this. Truth makes people free. Somebody say amen. amen. I said, I want you to know this. I said, the devil has no mercy. You think you're going to play around and you're going to, well, yeah, I don't know if I, listen, when the devil gets you in his grips and you wind up in the the infernal flames of hell burning for an eternity, don't think that you're going to get some kind of repose or respite. I says, the devil has no mercy. He's around you. He's in your life because he wants to destroy you. He wants your soul to be condemned to hell. Those are not nice words to speak, but sometimes we have to speak truth. Because only truth makes people 
Amen. And I just told him that, that quickly and that clearly. And I says, are you ready for this? He said, yes, that quickly. I prayed for him. He was instantly delivered. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He was instantly delivered of demonic possession and oppression. And he became a brand new man. And I said, okay, salvation has come to this house. We walked out into the dining room. We saw his father sitting at the table with a bad back. And I walked up to the father and I said, S, I said, salvation has come to this house. I said, your son is now thoroughly saved. I said, his sins have been wiped away. And the Lord has blessed him with eternal life. I says, are you ready for it? He said, he looked at his son and looked at me. He said, yes. We prayed for him, and he was gloriously saved. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a hand clap right now. We left that place. They happened to be the owners of the hotel where we were conducting ministry. We left China. I was in, in Singapore. They called about six months later, and they asked Pastor Angie, where is Pastor Cornelio? And she said, well, he's not here. He's in Singapore. And, and she said, we need to talk to him because our other son, A, was a twin with R. They were both twins. They were both studying together. And A was the dominant one. And R was the playing second fiddle all his life. When he came in, uh, they called me from, from China and they said, where are you, Singapore? Okay, we're coming to see you tomorrow. I said, it's not necessary. I said, we can pray over the phone and the Lord can save your son right now. Because when Raymond came back from Canada, he, he came in and he saw his brother. And the moment that he saw him, he said, what happened to you? And A said, I received Jesus. He says, well, I don't know anything about that, but whatever you have, I want it. So the whole family flies to Singapore. And they, as soon as they walk in, the Lord gives me a word of knowledge concerning R. And I said, R, I said, all your life you've been playing second fiddle to your brother. He's been the stronger, the leader, the dominant one. Am I right? He said, yes. He says, you have been bound by a spirit of fear and intimidation. But the Lord wants you to know that right now, today, you can be set free. Do you want it? He said, yes. We prayed for him. He was instantly delivered, born again, gloriously born again, and completely delivered of the spirit of fear and intimidation. And both of those young men are walking free in the Lord today. Amen. Give Jesus a hand clap. Why am I sharing this story with you? It's because no matter how bad the situation looks, you must know that no matter how dark it is, the light is always brighter. No matter how bad the decadent, sinful situation is, hallelujah, the grace of God abounds much more. Somebody say amen. It's all there and it's in you. Remember what Peter did? Peter did not pray for that young man. He said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto you. In the name of Jesus, rise and walk. Hallelujah. Give Jesus a hand clap right now. I'm telling you that you have freely received the amazing salvation that only God can give. You are free right now because God has freely blessed you. Somebody say amen. And the Lord is saying to you, if you have freely received it, now freely give it. Go out there and tell people, hallelujah. You know, this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. He this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it and the world can take it away. Amen? Come on, give Jesus a hand clap. Hallelujah. You've got enough in you to go out there and start a revolution of righteousness start a revolution hallelujah if every single one of us went out there and did this i want to tell you something in a month or two this congregation would be twice the size yeah. 
if we went out there and did this right now, I'm telling you, this whole atmosphere around this, this community would change. And we need to pray. Right where you are. I want you to know that you already have it. And Peter said, such as I have, I give to you. He didn't pray for the man. He didn't call out to the Father. He didn't pray in the name of Jesus. He just said, such as I have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus, rise and walk. If you're a father, you can be the greatest blessing to your family. I know a man in Lang came to a meeting. He had kind of been backsliding a little bit, had always known the Lord. But came and got right with God. When we came to this moment that we we're going to pray, he began to shake and to tremble. He repented got right with God. When he went home that day, it was an FGB meeting. When he went home that day, he walked into his house. The moment that he walked into the door, the moment he stepped into the house, his three-year-old son cried out to his mother and said, Mom! And she went to see what the child wanted and this is what the son said he said Jesus just walked into my room because the father got right that man is serving God today I'm going to invite you to stand up to your feet I don't know if you know this, God, this kind of joy, this kind of peace, this kind of love. Love never fails. I don't know if you know this, but I suspect that you do. I get a witness that most of you know this wonderful, glorious, miraculous relationship with Jesus Christ. If you've been saved, you are acquainted with the miraculous. Because salvation is the greatest miracle that there is. If you know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you know joy, peace. You know faith. You know grace. You know mercy. You know all the goodnesses that God. And so... We're all going to pray this prayer together. If you've never known the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, pray this prayer. If you already know it, but want to reaffirm it, pray this prayer. Say, everybody say it with me. Heavenly Father God, right now in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you because you so loved sinners, me, that you gave your only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Father God, I believe right now in Jesus name I repent of all my sins forgive me cleanse me of my unrighteousness come into my heart and be my Lord come into my family and be our Lord Come into my house. Make it a home. 
I want to love as you are now loving me. I receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Father God, as freely as I have received, I want to give in the name of Jesus. I choose right now to be released. I'm going to count to three and I'm going to invite you to just begin to pray in the spirit. As you do, the spirit of the Lord is going to begin to permeate every cell in your body. I declare right now in the name of Jesus that sickness is going to flee. Disease is going to flee. Infirmity is going to flee. Pain is going to leave. Oppression is going to be gone. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus, salvation, which is everlasting life, healing, deliverance, and protection is going to begin to infiltrate your entire being from the merry marrow of your bones. From the top of your head to the very soles of your feet. At the count of three, begin to pray. One, two, three, pray. Pray. Receive it right now. Receive it right now. Your spirit is now ascending above your soul and your body. Right now, healing come in the name of Jesus. Sickness be gone in the name of Jesus. Disease and infirmity be gone in the name of Jesus. Pain in the name of Jesus be gone now in Jesus' name. Oppression in Jesus' name be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now in the name of Jesus, we come against every lie. We come against every deception. We come against diabetes. We come against high blood pressure. Pray, pray, pray. We come against high blood pressure. In the name of Jesus, we come against arthritis. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we come against this damnable pandemic that is in the world today, pandemic COVID. In the name of Jesus, whatever strain you are, we bind you in the name of Jesus. COVID be gone in Jesus' name. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Arabarakasanda, we nullify and we cancel the negative consequences or effects of the vaccines. Right now, in the name of Jesus, everybody from head to toe, in Jesus' name, we cancel the consequential effects of medication. In Jesus' name, drowsiness in the name of Jesus. Pharmakia, in the name of Jesus, we come against you. We bind you, command you in the name of Jesus to be canceled and to be nullified right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Heavenly Father God, we declare yes and amen that by your stripes we are healed in Jesus' mighty name. I declare in the name of Jesus that the Lord has forgiven your iniquities and healed all of your diseases. Right now in the name of Jesus, I declare that the word of God that is in you is life unto you and it is health to all your flesh. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus, hallelujah, that God is not slack concerning his promise, but he is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all would come to the saving knowledge of Christ Jesus, the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. 
Say it with me. Lord, I receive your presence into my life. I declare by faith that you've forgiven all my iniquities and you've healed me of all of my diseases. Disease, in the name of Jesus, be gone. Leave now in Jesus' name. Just commune with the Lord right there. Just let the Spirit of God feel you right now. not enough to be blessed but we are blessed to be a blessing right now God wants to release in you gifts gifts of healing gifts of miracles gifts of faith gifts of words of wisdom words of knowledge these are all gifts that are freely given to those that have the fullness of God the Holy Spirit in their life gospel of Luke chapter 11 verse 13 if you be an evil know how to give good gifts unto your children how much more will your Father God give the Holy Spirit to them that ask Him? Everybody pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father God, right now, I'm asking you to bless my life with the gift the fullness of the Holy Spirit I open up my heart and I welcome the beloved Holy Spirit say it with me Holy Spirit come into my life fill me with your presence bring all your gifts with you that I may be a blessing to the world around me. At the count of three, begin to pray. One, two, three, pray, pray. Pray, 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 pray. The Lord is saying you are right now building yourself up on your most holy faith the Lord is saying you're not talking to man you're talking to me hallelujah in the spirit you're speaking mysteries right now in the name of Jesus I relieve the gift I release the, the gift of the word of wisdom I release the gift of the word of knowledge. I release the gift of prophecy. I release the gift of miracles. I release the gift of faith. I release the gift of healing. I release the gift of prophecy. I release the gift of tongues. I release the interpretation of tongues right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive ye the Holy Ghost in the mighty name of Jesus that you might be a blessing to the world around you, to the world in darkness, to those that are hurting, to those that are in pain. Right now in the name of Jesus, we say yes and amen to all of your goodness. 
Jesus appeared to his disciples in the Gospel of John chapter 20, verse 19, 20, and 21, and he said this. Receive ye the Holy Ghost. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. Who sin soever you forgive, they shall be forgiven. Right now in the name of Jesus, we just say yes and amen. Book of Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Jesus Christ of Nazareth that dwells within you, who is anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good, and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Say it with me. I welcome you, Holy Spirit. Bless me now to go out and do good and heal all that are oppressed of the devil. In the name of Jesus, as it is written, so let it be. Amen. 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 Give Jesus a hand clap right now.